What up, YouTube? This is Insane Monster, and as you can see, we have a new style of thumbnail. This one in particular was created by someone who recently joined my Discord and offered to make uh, thumbnails for me. I asked if he wanted me to credit him, though he said he didn't want that. So, I'll respect it, but I still have to say that I am grateful for the great thumbnail he made me right here. As you can tell, this what if is the beginning of what if Deku was an Eliotrope. If you don't know what that is, uh, if you go on Netflix, there's a show called Wack Fu. Watch it and you'll understand the powers and all that. Though, I think the powers for the main character are stronger than a a uh, everyday or a citizen heliotrope perhaps considering the main character is basically a immortal but uh, that's just my thought on it there's not a lot of fight scenes just seeing a uh, scene you know never mind but either way essentially heliotropes are the twin race of the dragons and that's quite quite literally the first heliotropes were actually hatched from eggs in the same egg as their dragon twin sibling. <clears throat> so basically, one of those eggs that looks like a giant jewel, jewel egg holds both an heliotrope, a humanoid uh, being, and a dragon. Now, as for their powers, they have the ability to create portals. The more practice and the stronger they become, the more able they are to create portals at, from greater distances instead of uh, creating portals that are in front or in the line of sight or something like that. As for the other powers, energy blasts, uh, sensing life energy, aka Wakfu, which is basically life energy in the show, as well as uh, using their energy to form weapons. This has been seen as not just a sword, a shield, but also a scythe. So I'm thinking that the weapons that are made through this energy are more of a personal preference to what the wielder chooses to make. As for any features that they have that's different from humans, they have glowing, uh, they have small glowing wings coming out of the, out of their heads that allow them to fly with like true flight, which is part of why they wear that odd hat. That and also the hat doubles as a, uh, guess a baby holder kind of thing. So, now that we got the basics of what an heliotrope is, taken care of, let's get to the what if. We start where the heliotropes are getting things all settled, and they have multiple dofuses, which are the dragon eggs that hold an infant dragon and an infant heliotrope in each one of them. As well as the Elia Cube, a powerful artifact that's filled with massive amounts of energy. Though, an attempt was made to steal not just the cube, but some of the Dolphuses. They were able to stop them, but they decided to use the cube and such to open the portal to another dimension in order to hold them there until they can create a place for the eggs as well as the cube to be stored safely without anybody being able to get in to them and steal them without you know unless they're they're allowed to take them or whatever so the dragon one of the dragons that happens to be one of the 12 immortals which is the first heliotropes or and dragons uh, six dragons, six heliotropes. Each one is paired up 
the the one that goes is the one that you see in the in the thumbnail here, Ferris. Him and an and a heliotrope citizen decide that volunteered to help him went through the dimensional portal that was open using the power of the Elia cube and the, some of the Dofuses. They Their job was to stay there until it was time to come back where they could properly store and make sure that the Dofuses and the Elia cube were secure and safe from anyone from stealing them. When they ended up in the new world that they were going to live in for a little bit, they found that people here had all sorts of powers and abilities that caused them to even have odd forms, even compared to some of the things in their world. So, blending in wasn't that much of a problem. Though people saw the, the Eliotropes man's hat and were kind of curious about it, thinking he might be hiding something. As for who this man was, his name was Hasashi. It didn't take long when he met a woman with green hair and green eyes named Inko. Time moved on and they even fell in love, got married, and Deku was on the way. Though, about a month into the pregnancy, it was time to go. Though, he told Ferris that he wasn't going back. Ferris looked at him and stated, Ferris understands. You have responsibilities to the one you love, as well as the child that will soon be born. I only wish you the best. And, yes, Yes, I'm, not, I'm being completely serious. Ferris talks in the third person. Yeah. So, he left along with the Elia Cube and the Dolphuses. Deku was born, and when he was, the doctors were kind of surprised to see a little baby with glowing blue wings coming out of his head. Looked like energy wings or something like that, but they were physical. Actually a part of his body, instead of just something that manifested. And Hasashi took Deku and put him in the little hat slash baby uh, holder, or whatever you want to call it. Covering up his wings and giving them to Inko. Inko looked at him and said, wait, is that what that hat is you were it yeah Hasashi just looked at her and said yeah yeah basically it acts something like a hat slash baby carrier holder and uh, just covers up our wings the doctors look at them and said wait you have the same wings he lifts it up a little bit and shows them then puts it down. Considering the world that they're in, uh, he kind of had the culture adjustment where he was able to be less shy about the wings on his head. Though still covering them up like that. He went through the more adult channels or whatever you want to call it. They haven't described this in the show, but he did become a hero. Though he didn't really get the whole thing with hero names, so he just went with his own name. He did quite well, even becoming one of the top heroes. Zuku grew up, and he met Bakugo, where he's like, what's with that hat? Deku just sm smiles and says, It's something to do with my dad's side of the family. That's all I was told. Hisasi and Inko decided to not tell Deku about his uh, heritage on his father's side so he could have an easier time blending in. Blending in and adjusting and all. Basically so he wouldn't have trouble or worries.
That's what they chose. When it came time for the or when Deku was supposed to wake in this quirk, which is about four or five, uh, they decided not to take him to the doctor, considering worries about uh, them figuring out he's only half human. And they already knew that his heliotrope powers would awaken at about age 10. They told Deku that, and Deku relayed that to them, that he does have power, it's just that it's still asleep or out he's not sure how to explain it properly because he doesn't really get it he thinks it's uh, his power is a quirk he knows he has one because of the wings on his head underneath his hat then bakugo just storms up saying oh come on you look you're quirkless aren't you and stop wearing this weird hat swiping the hat off of his Deku's head, everyone saw the wings coming out of his head. Deku instantly grabbed it and then just started to run, jumping out the window. The teacher started to freak out, but right in front of their eyes, he began to fly and just kind of float down. I go, wait, I thought he said his quirk hasn't fully, wasn't awake yet. Deku, get back here! He, Gachan ended up uh, catching up to him, and all Deku could do to explain was that the the wings are just something that natural to me. What well, I had it since birth. That's all. I have my dad's quirk, but he said his was the same way. The wings stay with us until this thing. The wings are just a part of our body. But our real power doesn't wake up until around 10 years old, he said. Bakugo was thinking, wait, then what kind of power is it? He explains his dad's power, and he's like, whoa, some kind of merger between energy control and warp and a warp quirk? That's insane. But wait, why do you have wings? Deku just said, Dad said it's just part of who we are. So I don't really know. So Bakugo doesn't really mess with him as much as in this one, though he still do does some sparring. If Deku's in a bind, he gets his hat off quick and flies away, which really messes with Bakugo forcing him to train even harder in aerial combat. Then we get to the point where he's about 10. During one of Bakugo and Deku's sparring practices, Bakugo was about to land a hit, but Deku threw his hand forward and it began to glow, opening a portal where Bakugo just sunk in. Deku was freaking out, wondering what just happened. And where and what he did with the Bakugo. He tried to do it again to see if Bakugo was okay. He was able to do it, and Bakugo just kind of fell out. Then vomited. Yeah, if you're not an heliotrope, travel going through a heliotrope portal has a tendency to give you a I guess the proper term would be portal sickness. S similar to motion sickness, I guess. After that, the Deku went to his dad and told him that his quirk woke up. And he looked at his son smirking and told him, Good, now it's time. Deku looked at him and said, Time for what? His father just smirked, replying with, You're training, of course. He trained him as hard as he could, pushing him to for his power to get stronger and stronger, allowing him to sense the life around him, to see everything, even going as far as to blindfold him. The energy around him, seeing it, using a ability to sense energy or whatever you want to refer to as Wack Fu, he was even able to see items 
around him, like coins and stuff. Everybody just even seeing people on the other side of walls, clearly. All with a blindfold over his eyes. He even practice when him and his dad weren't practicing together. He even practiced alone in his room with the to see how far he can extend it. He got pretty good at it. He can encompass the he can encompass the entire apartment complex they're in to see everybody. He learns how to summon the weapons and such, even gaining the mark the blue markings on his body. Is becoming stronger and stronger. And he even found figured out how to use those portals to use a type of different flying method that made him look like a blue blur. If you haven't seen Wack Food, uh, go see it and you'll see what I'm talking about. Literally, he just turns into a blue flash blur thing. So he can fly now without using his actual wings. Practicing with his energy blast as well. Essentially, he finds it cool that to make an energy blast, he can just slam one portal into another. And the more portals he slams together, the stronger the blast is. Though it also increases the amount of energy he's burning up. And it took a while until he's able to control himself at a point where his dad thinks that he could train with Bakugo again. This is about the near the time, a little bit before the start of the anime, where they start to train. And Deku just, uh, he's messing with him. He's just full on made a portal underneath him, and then a portal above that for the infinite fall. Until Bakugo was able to use his explosions to get out of there and vomit it again. Then instantly going after Deku. Saying, you damn nerd! You're gonna pay for that! So we get to the actual beginning of the anime. Where we see that the teacher still does the same thing. And announces that Bakugo and Deku are going to apply to UA. Nobody's really surprised by that. Deku, Bakugo's quirk, it's extremely combat uh, ready, making him pretty powerful. But Deku's also powerful, seeing that they think he has a quirk that combines energy manipulation with a warp. Which is pretty incredible considering warp quarks are extremely rare. They try to do their best to keep Deku and Hasashi out of the doctor's office. There would be a lot of questions considering that they don't, that uh, Hasashi doesn't have a scrap of human DNA and Deku only has half human DNA. So they don't want all that hassle. At least that's what Hasashi and Inko have been doing. Deku doesn't know a thing. Still in the dark. He still takes the notes and everything, though he finds it easier to get a good viewpoint using his portals to get around. And as for the distance he's able to do, he's able to do a good distance away. If he's been to a place before, it actually makes it a lot easier for him to make a portal to it, despite the distance. So, uh, further distance means, I want to say, he has to put a little bit more energy into it, at least. So, not enough to cause any real problems, unless he's like going on the other side of the world. Like, crazy distance. So... We continue to the sludge villain attack, where Deku ends up sensing the whack foo of the sludge villain and backing up a little bit. Obviously, the sludge villain tries to get him, but Deku just makes a portal underneath him and drops down behind the villain. 
instantly blasting him with an energy blast. He was surprised to see a hole through the villain, only for the villain to turn back around and attack him again. Luckily, he was able to avoid getting caught, but he kept thinking, damn it, how am I supposed to hurt somebody who's hurt someone whose body is basically some kind of liquid? Ugh. Which is when All Might burst in saying, I am here. Taking out the sludge villain instantly. Deku it instantly fans out and asks for an autograph, which uh, All Might does oblige to and jumps away. Though Deku, he uses the portal method of flying to follow All Might, which surprises him, where they land on the roof, same rooftop. All Might saying, look kid, I get you're a fan, but come on, this is a bit much. Deku looked at him seriously and asked, All Might, what, what does it take to be a hero? All Might looked at him and said, Taking, to be a hero is about doing what's right, whether it's safe or not. And doing it even if you're scared. That's just how it is. Deku gets that. He can understand that clearly. Then All Might just bump. Then All Might deflates. With Deku screaming like, Oh, you're, you're not All Might. What are you? He instantly makes a blade out of his energy, saying, You're some kind of imposter. Who are you? Which All Might just yells at him, saying, Calm down, and that he is All Might. Explaining the injury, and that he has a time limit on his power now. Deku's surprised, and kind of saddened, by this while also being amazed. All Might is so hurt and he can only do so much hero work at a, a day now, but he still pushes himself so far and has been the number one hero after all this time with, this, with that injury. Amazing. Once, though, well, they do split their ways, which then, boom, the sludge has Bakugo now because uh, All Might got a little surprised and the jug kind of jumped out of his or hopped out of his pocket. Now we have where Bakugo is trying to get out, exploding everything like normal. All Might gets there first, seeing that he failed. And when Deku gets there, he looks and sees Bakugo being being uh, held hostage by the villain. He thinks this is my fault. It blitzing right past the heroes. When the villain went to go hit him, he used the portals to use that flying movement trick. Sorry, it's hard to explain it. It's... We'll call it the, we'll just call it soaring, All right? We'll call that technique where he uses the portals to fly soaring. He uses it to get, to move around and dodge the villain's attack. He, when he lands, he makes a portal and sticks his hand through it, grabbing something. When they pull, everyone is seeing that Bakugo's face is sinking into the sludge. Then they see the back of Bakugo's uniform being ripped out from the portal. Basically, Deku made a portal that opened that one end was in front of him and the other was in, inside the sludge villain behind, right behind Bakugo. Ripping him out and then closing the portal before the sludge villain could come through and attack them. Deku used the sword, again, the portal flying thing, to get up into the air and made three individual portal lineups, each with three portals ready to be slammed together and said, enough, slamming 
all of them together, blasting the villain, making chunks of them go everywhere. Of course, he got a little scolded, yet complimented on his strong quirk and all that, as well as Bakugo. And they went home. Bakugo said, I didn't need your help. Echo just replied with, okay then. Which just annoyed Bakugo because he isn't making any kind of retort or anything to, to prove him wrong, which just makes Bakugo mad because, let's be honest, Bakugo's default setting is anger, hate, mad, boiling, whatever. So he just storms off. Then All Might shows up saying, I am here, and deflating with the spit, take a blood, with, fuck, that ah, right, with Deku stay yelling, oh, oh my, you shouldn't be doing that, you already pushed yourself past your limit today, right, jeez, you gotta take care of yourself, oh my, smiles, not hearing that this kid is so worried about him, he, explains that he did good work, and he embodied what it means to be a hero. When he asked, why did he just run in there like that? Deku said, I don't know. When I saw Bakugo being held, no, when I saw Kachan being held hostage by that villain, I just, I before I knew it, I was running right past the heroes and, and to them. Once I knew recognize what was going on, figured it was too late to go back. All Might smirked and said, Young man, I would like you to inherit my power. Which confused Deku, obviously, so they had the same kind of conversation where All Might explains that his power can be passed down, and told him where to meet for training. Obviously, Deku is so excited for this. And when he gets to where All Might told him to, he finds himself at Dagobah Beach. Though he just thinks it's some kind of landfill. But it's All Might corrects him, saying that it's a beach that, due to the current, a lot of trash ends up here. So plenty of people take advantage of that and just dump all kinds of stuff. Then he just sees a full-on truck on me that was left on the beach. And he's like, seriously? How has nobody been called to clean this mess up? All Might walks in front of him saying, because nobody bothered. And this will be where we're training. You'll be cleaning this entire beach. Which Deck was like, oh, come on. How is that possible? Well, well, young Midoriya, you got ten months. So, it'll have to be. Though, it, he said there was ten months until the entrance exams. Due, from training, doing the exercises, as well as cleaning the beach, and keeping up in his studies to make sure he didn't fall behind. He was able to clean the beat in six months. As and when he received it, he said, Young man, you are someone who has worked hard and earned this. Now then, plucking a hair and said, Eat this. Which honestly most hilarious part of the anime. He begrudgingly eats it, Ugh. and he asked, what now? All Might stated, now we wait for it to digest. They do that, and when it's about two or three hours later, All Might stood up and said, all right, show me what you got. He stands up and asks, how does it work? All Might explains that, basically, it's like you're bo surging your body with energy. Deku looks at him and says, oh, I already know how to do that. He 
decides to first try to make a portal. Though when he did, the portal was a lot bigger. And his and the markings on his body showed up without him even meaning to do so. Due to the fact that Deku in this universe is half heliotrope, half human with quirk genes, the power of one for all, the quirk, is influencing the heliotrope powers, amping them up. And now, instead of just those uh, some markings on his body, now his entire hand, all the way right past his elbows, from his and whole feet to right past his knees, are full on glowing and don't just have marks on them. His eyes are completely glowing now. And you look at All Might, thinking, saying, what the hell? All Might looks and says, hmm, well, considering you have an energy-based quirk, I suppose this isn't too out of the ordinary. It seems as though that now, every time you use your power, you'll, these markings, as these glowing markings and eye, will just happen. Betsy thinks, oh, man. Now, uh, I can just hear Kachan mocking me, calling me a nightlight. All Might laughs, saying, probably. And said, all right, get going. Let's see what you got. Since, Deku, since an heliotrope Deku would be used to managing energy throughout his body, it, he's able to do it pretty well. Able to spread it out to use 25% of one for all without breaking anything. All Might describes, tells him that, which Deku responds with, wait, this is only 25%? Jeez. Yes, though, if you're going to fight more low-level villains and such, you will have to dial it down. Okay, so should we check my other powers? He, All Might said, yes. For the energy weapons, his weapons are a lot brighter now. Hard, they're harder to break, and they're a lot, and they do a lot more damage. Deku's been practicing his energy weapons ever since the training with All Might started, trying to get used to various types of weapons. We have not just the sword and the shield, ham we got a hammer, an axe, etc. Et but he can notice that the that his wep energy weapons are a lot more powerful now. Next, he tried the energy blast. He started off with slamming two of the portals together, and when he charging it up with 25% of one for all. When he did, it made, it just split the frickin' ocean. And he just looked with a blank face saying, okay, that's way more powerful than what it should be. Jeez, this quirk has a lot of kick to it. I'm quite surprised to see how well he's getting the hang of this. And then decides that they should start sparring for him to get some combat practice in. Deku agrees, and they begin. All Might finds it hard trying to land a hit on Deku, since he keeps using his portals to dodge, getting away from his line of sight, then popping in from somewhere else, landing a solid hit on him. Uh, and after landing said hit, jumps back off to go into another portal and out again to hit him again, repeating the process over and over. All Might could take it, and eventually he threw a powerful punch to send a shockwave to blow Deku back, though so he was able to land just fine. Heliotropes, if the main character Hugo, I mean Hugo, is anything to go by, they tend to be somewhat acrobatic.
So All Might's impressed with this kid's physical ability. He asked, so, given your quirk and appearance, I'm guessing you're Hasashi's kid. Deku replied with, yeah, you know him? Not personally, though I have heard of him. He does good work. And it seems as though you inherit his his quirk exactly. Though now that it's being boosted by one for all, I think you'll be far more powerful than him. Good smart saying, really? That's awesome. This kind of banter and training continued till Deku was able to min uh, manage one for all in 5% intervals for 5% power, 10, 15, 20, and 25. That's the easiest way Deku's able to manage the power to scale it back for when he needs uh, a less damaging attack and revving it up for a more powerful one. And this, like I said, it continues to where we get to the UA entrance exam, which I will be stopping here for now. Now, as for the next what if, do I was saying I was going to do the spiral power one, though due to the fact that the 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 one the uh, sorry, uh, he said he didn't want to. Me, he said he declined get me giving them credit, so I'll respect that. But uh, he hasn't finished the uh, thumbnail for Spiral Power Deku. So as for the next what if that will be up on this channel, it will be what if Asta had Ultra Sanja's powers. And yes, it will be a using a thumbnail that was also made by the same maker of this one. Hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like, comment, and make sure to ring the bell for notifications and to su subscribe. Yeah, sorry. So, have a good night and hope you enjoyed.